Thank you, Calvin. Uh, no, that's not the one. Oh, yeah. So I have um, one slide, so you can see what I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, basically, what I want to address today is um, the non-conventional for, non forms of pollution. So we always hear about air, air pollution, marine pollution, but there are many other forms of pollution that are not even in the agenda and that are not recognized as pollution itself, when it is actually pollution. And one of those forms that uh, increasingly is gaining more awareness is the agricultural uh, pollution. So pollution coming from agricultural practices. The agro-industrial model that we have right now for in our food systems for food production is really, really, really um, dirty. And it's not just dirty for the environment, for, but also for our bodies. So we also should talk about pollution in our bodies, just like um, Philly said, uh, how, uh, how it contaminates uh, our bodies and, and leaves us to death or to terrible illnesses. So the agri agricultural sector is the sector with the biggest growth. It's increasingly growing. Uh, there is a figure that from 1990 to 2010, it increased by 8%. That was back then in 2010. From, ten, from 2010 to 2017, it has increasingly grow, it, it has grown exponentially, especially in Latin America. For Latin America, for a region, this is a very big problem because every time there are more conflicts for land and there is more deforestation in order to make way for uh, agricultural production. A lot of this in my region is happening because of livestock production. So what you see in the picture, it's the CAFOs or centers for uh, Center for Agricultural Feeding Operations. So the the system that we have now, the the system that feeds us, that we that we actually you know get nutrients from, that makes us uh, live and be persons and healthy persons, etc., is completely contaminated. I mean, there are a lot of issues to address in this uh, industry, and. Uh, Okay, as you can see, the animals, there are issues of animal welfare. Animals are not allowed to be animals anymore. They can barely move. Uh, they actually don't eat what they are supposed to eat naturally, but they are injected with thousands of different antibiotics, hormones, and all of that we are absorbing it. We, our children, are absorbing all, all of what's coming. There's the issue right now of the antimicrobial resistance uh, because, you know, because all, all this is in the food chain and then the waste end up in the water, you know, and everything is integrated. So this is a panel for land and soil pollution, but it's important also to be aware that it is in every single part of the system. So it also leads to air pollution, it also leads to marine pollution and everything is integrated. So we do need to be more aware of how this unsustainable industry is poisoning every single uh, other component of, of the system, including the human system. So when we talk about, uh, for example, livestock production, we don't just need to th think about uh, the animals themselves, but also the, the feedstock for the animals. Actually, Paraguay is a very good example because Paraguay has the, um, the biggest concentration of, of land per capita. So it is like, I don't have the figure here right now, but like 80% uh, of the population owns less than 1% of the land. So it's, it's that uh, big of a scandal how the, prop the land is concentrated in countries like Paraguay. And Paraguay is actually the fourth exporter in the world of soy. And this soy goes to Europe, goes to Russia, goes to the US to feed the livestock in those countries. So Paraguay, uh, Paraguay's food security is completely undermined. Actually, Paraguay is one of the poorest countries in the region, in Latin America. And it, there's also like a big issue for land conflict. A lot of uh, communities have been evicted. A lot of communities have been impacted uh, because of, uh, of um, pesticides, uh, spraying with pesticides 
children have died. There has been cases in the international court. So this is a very, very big um, issue. Um, so as the agricultural sector keeps on growing, then there's also the threat of the free trade agreements. Every time that, free, that when, when agricultural products enter these free trade agreements, then we will, this situation will continue to escalate. So now many countries like Paraguay are looked at just uh, providers of commodities for countries in the north. Um, then if we talk about health impacts as well, we need to think about obesity as one of the illnesses that uh, are caused because of this expansion and because of this model that doesn't really think about uh, human animal welfare, but it's just about profit. We cannot just rely on a, on a food system that, that is uh, completely inclined towards profit. There is a case, a very important case I wanted to bring up about uh, sugarcane and sugary drinks. So recently in Colombia, there was a proposal for a 20% tax on sugary drinks, but it turns out that Colombia has a very big company. So of course, everybody knows Pepsi, everybody knows Coca-Cola, but in Colombia, there is also a big um, uh, soda company that's called Postobón, and Postobón is one of the biggest conglomerates of industries, different industries in Colombia. So they have uh, cars, they have the mainstream media also. So it's very difficult because when, when a lobby group, a citizen concerned lobby group started pushing for this tax, they were immediately persecuted. The commercial that they had put on TV was immediately banned because of the power that the, that the whole industry has in the government. And this was a big problem, big discussion. In the end, the court, the, the Supreme Court, ruled in favor of the organization that they could actually, you know, put this um, um, proposal. But they were completely shut down. And, did, and this was after the, the Congress uh, denied the tax for the 20 percent. In the meantime, we see more children with obesity, and Colombia has a very big rate of diabetes as well. Um, and when you see, so this is just to bring you that uh, the the that there's no polluter pays principle. You know, when these companies are polluting your body, are polluting your environment, the consumer is actually paying the price for this. So where is the polluting the polluter pays principle? And finally. Uh, also, the, the environmental defenders, so it's not just in the like people who are defending their, their territories from mining or for, from different polluting companies, they are being killed, they are being criminalized. We, we cannot just keep on seeing this happening. We need to do something about this. I mean, this is going to be UNEA, what, like the biggest environment assembly, and I don't see any sense of urgency, not at all, not even in the resolutions. I was really shocked to look at a resolution on marine litter that proposes to reduce marine litter. No, we don't need to reduce marine litter. We need to face it out, you know? If you look at how the world is now, we really need to be very radical and we do need a, a paradigm shift. And we need to ask for this and be more strong and get mad. And I'm really mad about that. Thank you very much, Isis.